What's going on everybody? Chris Noggle here at Money School and the Money Multiplier. What I want to do today is I really want to dissect the infinite banking concept plan designs. So what the infinite banking concept is a process and what runs that process is a machine. The machine is a specially designed and engineered whole life insurance policy. Very different than any whole life that you've ever bought from your insurance agent or from the insurance store down the street. So one of the big things that people always ask is, what is the best design? And that question is a loaded gun because it is not something that everybody has the same need. It'd be like there is no silver bullet to how the plan designs are built. It really goes off of your needs and your goals. That's the most important thing. And if you don't understand your needs and goals, well, we need to start there because we can't solve a problem if you don't know what the problem is that needs solving. But once you know the problem, once you know what we're gonna solve using the machine, the specially designed and engineered whole life and the process called the infinite banking concept, now we've got something to go on and now we can design it. And designing it comes down to mathematics and the plan. We only use a couple mutually owned insurance companies that pay dividends because there's only a few out there that will work for this concept and work efficiently. There's probably 10 total insurance companies in the industry that we can use, of which we use five. I am only gonna show you one today. Not saying that this is skewed because I'm only showing one company, but unless you want a wall of numbers, this is the best way to do it. So what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at a client that has a couple different needs, but we're really gonna talk about the needs in just a second. We're gonna talk about a 36-year-old male, and we're gonna talk about this 36-year-old male putting $10,000 each year for only 10 years into their privatized bank, which is a specially designed and engineered whole life. And we're gonna look at four different designs. First, we're gonna look at a 60-40, Okay, and I'm gonna explain what that means. We're gonna look at a 70-30, we're gonna look at a product called a HECV, and we're gonna look at another design that is called a 90-10. But in order for me to explain what all these different designs mean, you need to first understand how a whole life contract is built. Because the most important thing to look at with this is not the design, it is to look at why we would design it differently for different uses. So. Here's how it's designed over here. Now, stay with me. When you buy a normal whole life insurance policy from your agent, your agent is selling you a death benefit first and foremost. And the death benefit is where the cost comes in. So if they were to design a $10,000 policy, they would more than likely put all $10,000 into the base of the contract, which would get you the maximum death benefit but it would also minimize the amount of cash value that you have to use. Now in the infinite banking concept, the process, the number one thing we wanna do is maximize the amount of cash value and minimize the amount of debt benefit you have. It sounds backwards, right? It is. We're designing a whole life backwards. We're designing it with the cash and the efficiency of your cash value growth first the death benefit is just there really as a secondary or as a bonus, as I like to say. It's just there to satisfy the requirements of calling this a life insurance contract. And it's there to satisfy one thing we're gonna talk about in a second, and that is the MEC, the MEC guidelines, which are IRS guidelines. So if we put 10,000 into the base whole life, how much money would you have in the first year? Zero. How much money would you more than likely have in the second year? Probably zero. And how much money would you have in the third year? Pretty close to zero. So if we're designing a machine that's to move your money through and to take out and use, would you want a policy that only pays you zero? No. So we would never put all of the money into the base, but your advisor would, because that's either number one, what they've been taught, or number two, they're looking out for their paycheck, the commission. Because if they put all the money in the commission, how much commission would they get in that example? Anywhere between 55 and almost 100% of your base. So they could make on a $10,000 premium, 5,500 or almost $10,000. That's a good day in the office, but it's not a good day for you, the client, because that means you have zero money because all the money went to a commission and went to cost. So we don't want that either. We want to build a plan where you, the client, has the most amount of cash, and the advisor has the least amount of commission. So now I'm gonna explain how we do this. Let's use the first one. 
a 60-40 design. This is probably like the standard in the industry for the infinite banking concepts. This is what Nelson Nash used for making all of his policies. This is what, out of, out of my nine policies, this is what seven of my policies are designed on. Actually, I'm sorry, it's eight of my policies are designed as a 60-40. And I know a lot about this, so bear with that. So if we're putting 10 grand in, in a 60-40, that would mean 40% or four, whoops, $4,000 is going to the base representing 40%. So 40% is going into the base. 60% is gonna go into the paid up additions. So that means 6,000 of your 10 goes into the paid up additions rider, which is a rider in the contract that allows you to take your money and put it directly into the insurance company's general account. That's a simple way of saying it. There's more complications or more complicated descriptions on the paid up additions, but we're gonna skip that. We're just gonna tell you that that's the money that becomes available to you immediately. And that's the money you can use. So therefore, most people would say, well, give me the most amount of the paid up additions. Easy. We would if we could, but you know what? There's rules. The government has rules, and those rules are called the MEC 7 pay rule. It means how much death benefit do we need to have to support the premium deposits going in? So we can't just put all the money into the, into the paid up additions. First off, you wouldn't really have a death benefit. You would just have a policy that doesn't represent life insurance. Second thing you would do is you would violate the MEC rules, and this would become like every other investment you've ever had, taxable. We don't want this to be taxable. We want this to remain tax-free forever. So we have to play within the IRS guidelines, which is the MEC 7 pay rule. So in a 60-40 design, we a lot of times don't even need to use term insurance to support the MEC guideline. Because remember, the MEC guideline really is just going to tell us how much death benefit we need to support the amount of premiums that we're putting into the policy. In a lot of the 60-40 designs, shown over here, we don't need any term. Now, I wanna be clear. Where is the cost in a life insurance policy? Two places. The death benefit, i.e. the base, but also if we need to add term insurance to the policy to satisfy the government, then that also includes an extra cost. So we want to minimize the amount of term insurance because we wanna minimize the cost. But in this example, we might not have to put any term insurance, which is why the 6040 is one of the most efficient long term. The death benefit also in the 6040 would be fairly high. So if I were to look at the example that we have here of a 6040 design, our death benefit in year one is $316,000. So let's just put this over here. Roughly see 316,000, no term. And how much would the commission be on this? Well, the commission would be based on the 4,000. So if you take roughly, it's about 55% of 4,000, that's what you're gonna make, about 2,000 bucks. And I'm just gonna put an estimate because we also get paid a little bit on the paid up additions, anywhere from one to 2% of the money going in. So one to 2% of 6,000. So you can see $2,000 to build this plan is about what the advisor is gonna get paid now that's not nearly as good as 5,500 and that's nowhere near as close to 10,000. So you can see you're in a good place on the 60-40 design, but now that you understand how a policy is built, let's go a little bit faster with this. Because we did four different designs for this 36 year old to show the different ways you can design this. And there's an unlimited amount of ways you can design it, I just wanna keep it simple. So first off, 70-30, same idea. If we've got 10 grand going in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 3,000 to base and 7,000 to paid up additions. Now in doing that, that is gonna force us to now have to put slightly more term insurance on. And if I were to look at how much term we need to add, we gotta put about $250,000 worth of term insurance to support this design based on the guidelines up here. So now the MEC guideline requires an extra 250,000 in death benefit, which comes at a cost of not a lot, about $247 for this person. $247 per year is about what that term insurance is gonna cost, but that cost is also gonna give you access to more money, which we're gonna show in just a second. So now that's this one, and the death benefit, if you're really counting, your death benefit on this one's about 351,000 total, and 
The commission on this is now based on 3,000, so you're at about 1,500 estimate plus, you know, you get paid 2% on that. So that's how this one would be designed. Now, everything I just showed you are standard designs. The top two are very standard. Nothing hard about them. They're gonna give you good cash value, great long-term performance, but now let's get into a need of this 36-year-old where he needs more money up front. He maybe wants to buy real estate or lend money, needs the maximum amount of money immediately, doesn't so much care about the growth in the future, but he cares about it, but his number one focus is, I need the most I can get today. That brings me to the next design, the heck fee. Heck fee is nothing more than an abbreviation of high early cash value. Now the Heck V is a specialty product offered by one of the carriers and only one of the carriers. This is a go-to for real estate investors, for high net worth individuals, or for people that know how to make their money go to work for them immediately. The Heck V is built using a 60-40 design. Don't get confused with the 60-40 here because this plan, I'll show you where the difference is, is definitely built completely different. So this is one of my favorite products because this is the product that puts you, the client, in the driver's position right out of the hole. It's gonna give you the highest amount of money to use immediately. So all of these plan designs, from the first one all the way to the last one that we're gonna talk about, you're going to have access to your money immediately in the first 30 days. Some people, if you read the testimonials, have access to their money the next day or three days after, but I'm just gonna tell you, your money's immediately available in the first 30 days. How much? We'll show you in a second when we do the breakdown. But the heck fee, where this plan is really unique is how it's built. It's built on a 60-40 chassis. But what the company did when they designed this, it was brilliant. They made it for corporate use and they brought it down to the individual use. They reduced the commission significantly for the advisor. So here's how this one works out. So if we've got the same breakout, we've got $4,000 of the 10 going to the base. We've got 6,000 going to the paid up additions. We have zero term, because remember here in the 6040, we didn't need any term, so no extra drag, no extra lost efficiency in the plan. The MEC guidelines are met just using a 6040 design. Your death benefit on this one is gonna be the lowest at $285,000. So if you're doing this as a legacy play, this is your worst option. But here's the beauty. The commission for the advisor on this one, about $387 for a $10,000 premium. Notice the difference? Each one of these designs has begun to reduce the commission for the advisor, which means you have more money. One person's gotta give, so another person gets. And that's the beauty of this. Now, let's move on to the last design that we have here. And the last design comes with a lot of controversy. A lot of advisors don't like this design. I'm, I'm not going to take a side. It's not my favorite because I understand the long-term risks that come along with this design. But a lot of advisors think this is the greatest thing because it does give you the best performance across the board. But that performance comes with more risk and potentially more fluctuation in the future because it puts some of the, the risk more on the dividend than it does on the guaranteed part of the contract. So this is called the 90-10. Very simple. Let's go back to the example. On the 90-10, all we're gonna do is we're gonna start changing up the plan design. Base is only gonna get $1,000. The remaining amount is gonna go to the paid up additions. Now remember in the beginning, you're thinking that's, the, that's what I want, that's the best thing, because I want less money going to the costly base, and I want the most amount of money going into that insurance company's general account thing so that I can use that money. Sounds like a win-win, and it might be, but this one comes with a need of $250,000. So you can see now we got 250,000 in term insurance, which is gonna come, same cost, and that cost is gonna run roughly about $250, or $250 a year. That's your cost, and now your MEC is satisfied because now we've bumped up the death benefit. So in this particular one, your death benefit's gonna come in at 351,000. But what is your commission based on? That's right, $1,000. So really, the advisor is gonna get a commission of about, ah, let's just say $550. And depending on their, the advisor's contract and whether they're a GA or just an agent, that's gonna vary. But let's just keep it simple, it's about 550. So you can see, these two on the bottom reduce the commission for the advisor significantly, which gives you access to more money. Now let's talk about the numbers. Let's get into the math on these and really see which one is going to solve the problem the best for you. 
Again, we can modify them, we can change up the numbers, but these are basic templates that we would use when looking at a client's problems that we're trying to solve. So when you're looking at it, you're thinking, why would anyone want a 60-40 when that one pays the, a higher commission and that one gives less available money early on? Well, let's start talking about that a little bit because it really comes down to the efficiency of the policy in the long run. So when we're looking at the 60-40 design, year one, you have 56.45, so slightly less than 60% of your money available immediately in the first 30 days. And then as it goes, the fifth year, your money's 40,000. And remember, you're putting 10,000. In these examples, I wanna just recap, we're doing a $10,000 premium, and we're putting 10,000 in for only 10 years. And then what we're doing in the 11th year is we're enacting what's called an RPU, a reduced paid up. All we're doing is we're going to the insurance company saying, hey, we no longer want the ability to put any more premium deposits into the policy. We're okay having a reduction in the death benefit because that's what they're gonna do. They're gonna reduce the death benefit so that the policy is fully paid up. Now, first off, we have over 4,200 clients. Never once, not one time, have we had one client ever RPU their contract. Now, why would that be? Most people are like, well, why wouldn't I wanna stop putting money in? Let me ask you this. If you learned how this system works, which we're gonna go into in just a second, and you were able to understand that your money can earn uninterrupted compound interest while you still use that money, and if you owned your own bank, why would you ever, ever, ever want to stop making deposits into your bank? I have never met anyone in my life that did not want to make deposits into their bank. The only people that wanna not make payments are people that are acting or treating it like it's payments, i.e. term insurance, or your car insurance, or your homeowner's insurance. Sure, you'd love it if you could stop making those payments, but these aren't payments. We have to change our mindset. What you're doing here is creating a banking system. We're using a specially designed and engineered whole life built backwards so that it works more like a bank account than it does a life insurance policy. So why would you ever wanna stop making premium deposits if they were treated like deposits, not payments. You see, people that tell me they wanna stop making premium deposits, they simply don't understand it yet. But that's okay. For all intents and purposes of this training, I just RPU'd all four designs and I show you the impact. So design number one, we have 40,000 in the fifth year and $10,000 to use. So what are the difference between the two columns? First column is your cumulative cash value which is how much money you have accumulated in cash value on each one of these different times, one, five, 10, and 20 years. But the second column to me is the most important column. It is how much money is your money making that year? This would be the equivalent of what would produce a cash on cash return, which I'll show you what that is. So that's the number that matters because remember I already said, in any one of these designs, if we put money in and we take money out, we don't change the interest or dividends paid to your cash value. Everything remains the same. It's called uninterrupted compound interest. So therefore, why would you ever not find a place to make your money go to work for you? A lot of people that talk about this, a lot of people that show these different you know, plan designs, they never actually talk about the infinite banking concept, which is the only thing I wanna talk about. This right here, these numbers, boring. That's what it is, because these numbers don't mean anything, because this is me putting money in and me never ever taking that money out. And if that's what you wanna do with this, we are not gonna be a good fit. We can't be friends, because that's not how your money should work. Your money should go somewhere. That one change, change where your money goes first so that it's earning uninterrupted compound interest, and then we should find somewhere where that money's gonna go to work for us. Here, your money is working for you. Your money's making a guaranteed interest rate plus dividends, but your money can work twice as hard, three times as hard, 10 times as hard if you send your money to work. So when you're looking at these numbers, I wanna be crystal clear. These numbers are just the policy paying you a guaranteed interest rate and dividends, which should not ever be what you accept as the final numbers because your money is just sitting there in this account, technically being lazy. Fifth year, you have 40 grand. But that year, how much money did I say that this client was putting in? 10,000. So that year, in the fifth year, he put 10,000 in and he's able to take $10,298.
So that's be the equivalent of you going to your bank account, putting $10,000 in your bank, going back, and then taking $10,298 back out of your bank. Pretty cool, huh? But what if every single day after that moment, the amount you put in always produced more than what you put in? What if every day of the rest of your life you could take out more than what you put in and that that amount you take out increases and can never do anything but go up? Now am I speaking your language? Because that's what's gonna happen. See, year 10, $100,000 is the amount of cash value. So in the 10th year, in the 60-40, 100 is what you put in, 10 years of 10,000, 100,301. When you look at it like that, you're like, wow, that's terrible. Of course, you're looking at it wrong. All you're doing is you're thinking you're just gonna put 10,000 in, you're gonna leave it sit there for 10 years. Why don't you just put the money in a bank account? Yeah, well, the bank account probably wouldn't pay you 301, but hey, it's the same thing. That's not what we're doing. Because in the 10th year, if I put 10,000 in, I can take out $13,119. I put 10 in and I take out 13,119. What is the return on your $10,000 that you deposited that year? Isn't it more than 30%? Because if I took $3,119 and I divided it into the 10,000 you deposited that year, that 10,000 would have to earn over 30% to give you a return of 3,119. Do you see how compound interest really makes a difference? And if we go down to the 20th year, you got 150 grand. So you've made $50,686 net after 20 years. If you're looking at it like that, that would be your money being lazy, never coming out of the policy. But you made $6,783 that year alone. That's how much money your money earned you that year alone. So now that we understand this is the amount you have in there, this is the amount year over year, okay? That's what this number right here is, year over year growth. So the 70-30, as you can see, we have a little bit more in the beginning. Not 56-45 like the 60-40, we now have 6,550. Going on to the fifth year, we have 42 versus 40, and we have 10,379 versus 10,290. Not a big difference. 10th year, 100,000 versus 102, 13,119, but now see this in the 10th year, because of the cost of the term rider, now what happened with the 7030 is we lost some efficiency in terms of the year over year growth. Yes, we have more money, but if you were playing the game of where you want the most amount of money every year, this is gonna start losing a little bit. But here in the 20th year, 150 versus 154, 67 versus 69. As you can see now, we dropped the term insurance and now the plan becomes more efficient. So these two on the top are great if you've got more of a long-term strategy. We use these designs for people that don't really know what they want to use the plan for, they just want a steady performer. And one of the other designs we use is not a 70-30, we use a 65-35, and I'll explain the pros and cons. But where these policies are really used over these ones down here, especially this one, is when a client wants to do a dump in. We're looking at a client that's only doing $10,000 a year, but what if this client wanted to put a $100,000 dump in into the policy? Well, that creates a different MEC rule. So MECs really come into play when we're talking about dump in money. So if we were gonna dump money in, these two chassis, including the HECV, become more efficient because now we've got more base to support the MEC rules or we've got more death benefit, if you will, to support putting extra money in. So these become more effective when we're doing dump-ins. But if we were just doing a straight 10,000, then these two might not be the most effective way for you to design your policy versus the next two that we're gonna talk about. So this one right here, the HECV, this is a 60-40 design, like I mentioned but I already told you how the policy obtains such high early cash value. They cut the commission for the agent significantly. A lot of agents in the career role or the life insurance or financial advisory capacity, they won't even talk about this because they don't wanna take a cut in their commission of almost 90%. So what they do is they just don't talk about it. Who's, who's that in the best favor of? Is that you 
or is that the advisor? The advisor wants to sell the highest commission product, not the one that gives you the most money. Our number one go-to plan for real estate investors and people that need high early cash value is this bad boy right here. And this bad boy pays us the least commission out of any of them. That's how it works. Someone's gotta give, so somebody else gets. And we understand that for people that need high early cash flow, you should be the one that gets, which is where this design reigns the true champion in my eyes. So here the hack fee, year one, we got 8,817, almost 90%. Actually, 88% of your first year deposit can go to work for you immediately. And we haven't talked about the infinite banking concept yet. I'm simply talking about the design of the product, which we call the machine. Because all we're doing is we're trying to build a specially designed and engineered whole life that we're gonna deposit money in, 10,000 in this case, and then we're immediately gonna take money out. And when I say immediately, what does that mean to you at this point? Immediately in the first 30 days. And send that money out to work for you, and I'm gonna show you how the infinite banking concept paired up with this machine, especially designed and engineered whole life, any of these different designs, will solve your money problems. But now, let's keep going. So we got 88% the fifth year. We had 40 in the 60, 40, 42 in the 70, 30. Now we got 48,000. And when we do just the year over year, we got 10,439, still the best by a small margin. Okay, the 10th year we got 109, which is significantly better than the others, and 13 to 17, still better by a little bit. In the 15th year, 157, the best performer so far over 15 years, and $7,042. Again, squeaks out as the best performer in the one, the five, the 15 year, the 10 and the 15 year performance. Now, as we go down the line, if I were to show you 20 and 25 and 30 years, if that was really a concern, like if you really were planning for retirement, one thing I didn't have room to do, but if I showed you on the illustrations, this would probably be one of, one of these two on the top would probably be some of your best performers from a retirement strategy. If you just wanted to put money in take money out sporadically and use it to work, and then use this primarily for retirement as a supplemental retirement plan, we call it Slurp, what you would do is you would probably build the chassis on one of these, because in the long run, they're gonna be your best performer. But again, we're not talking retirement, we're talking about what one works best for your needs, and if your needs are retirement, now you know, but if they're not, well, the other ones are gonna be better. So let's move on to the final contender, the 1090 or, or 9010. So remember in this one, in the 9010, your base, the rocket, gets $1,000 of the 10. The remaining amount, and this isn't exact, I wanna be clear and transparent, it's not a full 9,000 that goes into the paid up additions because some of that's gonna to have to come down here into the term. So you're gonna lose some of this 9,000 that would normally go into the, the PUA. Let's just say it goes to like 82. And then what we're gonna have is we're gonna maybe have 800 going here. But just for the simplistic point, I'm just gonna show it like this. And I'm just gonna put EST, okay? So 9,000 versus 1,000, but then we're gonna need to add term, so we have to put a term rider on because the term rider has to support the MEC guideline. Because now we're building a plan that has a very small main rocket and the majority of it is in the boosters. The IRS now looks at this and says, wait a second, you're starting to look a lot like an investment and a lot less like life insurance. So where are you gonna then, what are you gonna do to support our rules, the MEC 7 pay, and that's where <clears throat> we just simply have to put a bunch of term insurance. So let me talk about why the 9010 design is kind of frowned upon when you look at the IBC practitioners organization, the certifying group under the IBC practitioner or above the IBC practitioners, is we know <clears throat> one thing about term insurance. Term insurance gets more expensive as you get older. So every year, term insurance increases in cost as you get older. Because for the insurance company, it's term, which is death benefit, for a period of time. As you get older, the risk for the insurance company gets bigger. Therefore, your cost goes up. So the term insurance <clears throat> that has to stay on this, the cost goes up every year. <clears throat> and because the cost increases, we lose efficiency by keeping the term rider on this policy. Now, 
in all these examples, I'm only showing you 10 years of premium deposits. And then we're RPUing the contract in the 11th year, meaning all the premium deposits go to zero from years 11 on to age 121. We can never put more money in. But I already told you earlier, I would never suggest you do that because why would you ever want to stop making deposits into your bank? But if you wanted to continue making payments into or deposits into your policies, this one would have to contain a term rider and that term rider would get more expensive because you just don't have enough base to support the mech. And that is the biggest problem. But for the early run, it's not bad. <clears throat> Let's get into the numbers. The HECV had 8,817. The 9010 has 8,235. So it's not quite as good as the HECV, but very close. Significantly better than the 6040 and the 7030. But as we go to year five, the HECV had 48. This has 47. Again, the HECV still wins. 10,594 versus 10,498. So now you can see this becomes the winner in the fifth year from a cash on cash growth, okay, year over year. Tenth year, 109 versus 107, so heck, he's still better there. And 13,208 versus 13,217, still better there. And in the final year, the 15th year that we're showing, if you go longer, this changes. We got 157 in the HECV, 161 in the 1090. So we have more money in this as a total cumulative amount. <clears throat> and we have 7,288, which is still better than the HECV. So if we looked at the 9010 as an RPU, you can see it's really good in the short run and it starts to look better in the later years. And it's all in how the policy design works. So when we're looking at the design, for you, a lot of people wanted to say, oh, I want that one. Okay, great. But let's understand how it works in application more so than how it just looks on a piece of paper. Because this, again, like I said, is the least important part of what we're gonna teach you today. Because now what we're gonna do is, now I'm gonna show you how these numbers play into the most important part. So we just looked at the four different designs, the way that we can build and engineer your policy. Now what we gotta look at is what are your goals? Well, different people have different goals. Some people have debts. Other people wanna buy real estate, multifamily. Some people just wanna buy singles and doubles. Other people, want to buy cars. It doesn't matter where you fall in and it doesn't matter if I didn't draw what your goal is. I just want you to understand that these are the things right here that you are using the traditional bank's money. And the infinite banking concept is a process. It is a process of taking back the banking functions into your life. Instead of giving up control of your money, instead of giving up control in terms of monthly payments to the credit cards, to the car finance companies, to the banks that issue your mortgages, you are simply financing all the things that you buy using your bank. And what is your bank? Well, that is the machine. And we already talked about this, right? This is the policy. We call that the machine. The policy is a specially designed and engineered whole life. Now, why do we use a whole life? People ask me all the time, why a whole life? Why wouldn't you use something else? Well, because nothing else can do what a whole life policy can. So remember, a whole life has two components, a cash value and a death benefit. A whole life is one of the only life insurance policies that also has a level cost, meaning the cost for the death benefit, the base, which I showed you earlier, is level. There is never an increase in that base premium, okay, the cost part, okay? But the other part is with the whole life, we always build up a cash value and we start with a death benefit and that death benefit goes up over time. So here's the deal. When we put money into the whole life, when we change one thing, right? We're changing one thing, and that is where your money goes first. We want your money to go into your bank. So this is being your own bank, B-Y-O-B. And when the money goes in here, it instantly earns guaranteed interest plus dividends. So by today's standard, and today is 2020, the companies that I was showing you on that last screen right now pay a combined 6% per year. 
That's how much your money is earning with interest and dividends. So that's the machine. So unless you can find a bank account that offers guaranteed growth in excess of 6% or even close to that, that allows you to not just make deposits and earn it, allows that money to grow tax-free, okay? So let's keep going, tax-free, provide liquidity, I already showed you how liquid the money is in the first year, not 100%, but after that it becomes 100% and then some. And here's the other big thing. So it's tax-free, it's liquid, it is guaranteed, which I already wrote down, but I'm just gonna put it again because it's just an exciting word to say. But this is the only vehicle that allows me to take money out and not interrupt that guaranteed interest and the dividends. So in other words, when I take loans, because that's what I'm gonna do, I wanna buy a car, I wanna buy a house, I wanna buy a multifamily, I wanna pay off debt, whatever your goals are, we are gonna then go to our bank and we are gonna take loans from our bank. Why would you take a loan if it's your own money? People ask me this all the time, I think it's silly. Well, because you take loans from banks, so why wouldn't you treat your money the same way you treat the bank's money? So you're creating your own bank. You gotta think like a bank and you gotta act like a bank, which means when you take money from your bank, you take it in the form of a loan. But here's the other reason. When you take a loan, and I'm gonna use that example of $10,000. When you take a loan from your policy that has $10,000, now let's just, let's just play this number. We'll say we're gonna take $10,000 out as a loan. And we're gonna deposit that money in our bank account. We call it a segregated bank account because we want you to create a separate bank account for your banking system. So if we put 10 grand in and we took 10 grand out as a loan, how much money is left in your policy? Well, for any of you that said $10,000, you are absolutely right. So that doesn't make sense because if you go to your traditional bank or your brokerage account and you put 10 grand in and then 30 days later you take 10 grand out, how much is left in your brokerage? How much is still earning interest in your bank account? Zero, zero, because you took it all out. This account, when you take $10,000 out as a loan, you're not taking your money, you're actually taking the insurance company's money. They are literally giving you a loan in advance of your death benefit. So literally, the insurance company is giving you part of your death benefit today in the form of a loan. And just so you know, when you take loans out, for example, the equity in your house, do you get a tax bill for the amount of that loan even though it's equity? No. Loans are not taxable. So this gives you the ability to use your money in a tax-free environment. Now, does it cost money? Yes. The loans in today's world can be anywhere between 4 and 5%. Okay, actually the one that we're talking about here, I believe is 4.75, no, I'm sorry, it is 4% for this one, okay? 4% is how much we're gonna pay. I just put five for the other companies, but the one that I'm referring to, this company, charges you 4% interest. So right off the bat, if you're earning six and you're paying four, you're making a spread. And each year your spread goes up. And this is where people don't understand this, and I'm gonna put, uh, here's how I'm gonna do this. I wanna show you what I mean by that right now. Okay, folks, if you're looking at the screen right now, what I'm showing you is I'm showing you two different things here, two different charts. One is amortizing interest, which is exactly what all of you do. You borrow money from the bank and you pay interest. Now, in this example, we're gonna borrow 50 grand and we're gonna pay 6% interest to the bank over a 25 year period. The interest amount that you would have paid back to the bank by taking a $50,000 loan over that long of a period of time is 46,000. 645, you see that from the top, the red part, okay? That shows amortizing interest. This is what you've been taught and lied to and trained to do, borrow money. But if you start becoming your own bank and you actually save $50,000, I know it takes time, building wealth is a marathon, not a sprint, but if you save 50,000, you allow that $50,000 to compound at a rate of 6%, which is exactly what we're talking about over the same exact time frame of $25,000. Now the compounding would not change. Let's just say you wanted to buy something. I already explained, the compounding does not change. How much money would compound interest earn you over the course of 25 years? Well, the interest that you would have earned, not paid, would be 164,592. Meaning, the 50,000 you started with, compounded over 25 years, would have turned out a final balance of 214,593. So looking at that, you have to understand this is what we're talking about. 
We're talking about your money operating in a place where the environment pays you uninterrupted compound interest, where you tap into the magical thing called compound interest, and your money is allowed to work for you while you still have the ability to take that money out. So I hope that chart helped you a little bit in understanding compound interest versus what you're probably doing today, which is playing into the bank's lovely program of amortized interest. Now let me ask you, do you want to be the bank or do you want to give the bank all your money? There you go. So now that you understand how compound interest works and you understand why you want to be your own bank because you want to have all the money ending up back in your bank, let me just show you how it works. It's one giant circle just like I'm showing. The money starts in your bank where it's gonna earn uninterrupted compound interest. Then we take the money out as loans because we don't wanna interrupt our interest and our dividends, so we're just taking a loan which is in advance of our death benefit. The money goes into the segregated account and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start using that to do the different things. 10 grand, now let's just say you had $10,000 in credit card debt. And that $10,000 in credit card debt was costing you 20% interest and you were paying $500 every single month in interest. This is, might not be your example, but just let's pretend this is this client's example. We're gonna take the 10 grand and what we're gonna do is we're gonna then pay off this debt. So now you no longer own, owe 10 grand to the credit card companies and you no longer have a $500 monthly payment that is leaving your family forever. Most people would stop there, but you have to treat your money the same as you treat the bank's money. You were okay giving the credit cards $500 a month, every month. You never even thought about it. You're just like, well, it is what it is. But now you no longer owe that $500 to their bank, but you did take a loan from your bank. You took a loan for $10,000 from your bank to pay off their bank. So because of that, now what we're gonna do is we are going to be an honest banker and we are going to recapture the $500 that you used to give to the credit cards and we're gonna put it back into your bank, which is your specially designed whole life. By doing that, do you see what happened? We completed the circle. Every dollar that you used to give away to those credit cards is now making its way back over here, repaying the $10,000, making $500 a month available to you each and every month. That's not how it worked with the credit card. The credit card took their cut, 20% off the top, and then whatever was left became credit that you could use. Here, you keep the 20%, plus you have access to 100% of the $500. But here's the best part. You never stopped earning interest the whole time. The whole time this happened, your money never stopped earning interest and dividends, and you still got to use the money to pay off your debt. You still got to use the money to make the equivalent of 20% by recycling and recapturing the money you were giving away. So now, as we keep making deposits, and you already saw the numbers, if you remember, from the prior slide, the prior screen, here were your numbers. Depending on the design, as time goes on, every year we're putting $10,000 more for at least 10 years. Every year, your numbers go up. Every year, you make more money. So now as that happens, that's compounding work in your favor, but now you're taking back money you were giving away. So now we pay off the car or we buy a car. It doesn't matter. Even if you had a car loan or maybe you're buying a new car, you take 25 grand out, we no longer owe the car payment. Now let's just say that car payment, eh, 25 grand is gonna be about a $600 a month payment at about 5%. So if we paid that car off, well, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna treat our money the same way you treated the bank's money. And instead of paying $600 a month to the car finance company, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pay $600 a month back to your account because you're gonna recycle and recapture all the money that you used to give away. And you're just gonna keep going down the line. Maybe you're gonna lend some money on real estate. Maybe you're gonna buy multifamilies, but each time you are going to make sure that you recycle and recapture. And you're just gonna keep adding money down here. Now folks, this isn't new money. The only new money that you're saving here is the money that's going into your bank, but that's not new money anyway. Because when we help clients with their design, we usually talk about money that they're currently saving. How much money do you have going into the 401k? Is it more than what you're getting in a match? Take the difference and put that in your bank. How much money are you saving in your savings account or checking account? Be real. They're paying you nothing. Why don't you change where that money goes first? And then start making that money go to work. This is what people miss. This is where people, or I wanna say other advisors, explain this, but they only focus on 
the numbers in the policy. These numbers don't, these don't get me excited. What gets me excited is I can take this 13,000 out that year and not interrupt the interest and dividends, and I can then send that 13,000 over here to pay off debts, to buy cars, to loan out on real estate. I can keep doing that year after year after year, and now all of a sudden, I'm making more. I'm not just making what the policy pays me, that's the first line, that's my first part of my money working for me. And I send that money out to work again. Here, it made 5% on that car loan, okay? So I made an additional 5%. Over here, I made 20% on recapturing the money from the credit cards. If I loan that money out, I might make 12%. These are all on top of the spread. The spread is what you're making minus what it costs you to use that money. Think about that. Because one thing you're not understanding, you guys are doing the math. You're like, okay, well, I'm making a spread of 2%. If that's what you're thinking in your head, you already don't understand compound interest because you're not making 2%. Every year you're making more. Because every year your money's compounding. Because every year your money's working for you because of the environment your money's operating in. So each year this spread gets more and more. Do you remember the one? Let's, let's go back because you need a refresher some, from some time. The 10th year, you put in 10 grand, okay? Your deposit in the 10th year was 10 grand, or this person's. How much money do they have? 13 to use that way, that year. How much of a return is that? 30 plus percent. So what is 30 plus percent that year minus the cost of the money? Do the math, 30 minus 4%. You see folks, the spread keeps getting bigger and you didn't have to work any harder for it. You didn't have to work any longer for it. You didn't have to take on any risk in this equation. You simply had to change one thing and that was where your money went first. The rest of it will take care of itself. Folks, I hope you understand and enjoyed this training and if you like this one, make sure you check out this video because that is sure to wow you because the case study shows exactly how all of this goes to work for one of our real clients. We'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe and click that little bell so that you're alerted every time we put a new video. And there's a lot more coming. We'll see you next time.